Basic commands, this time on Metasploit Minute. This Metasploit Minute is brought to you by Hack5 and viewers like you. Support us directly at hakshop.com. Welcome to Metasploit Minute, the breakdown on breaking in. I'm your host, Rob Fuller, but you can call me Lewis. Today, we're going to be going over the basic commands from MSF Console. First and foremost, we are definitely going to have to show you how to get the cow. So here we go. So all you have to do is type banner. That's it. And just keep going until you get that cow. Because that's the only way anything's ever going to work. Or you can exit. Uh, we have a session, so let's see. Let's just get the banner. Might take a second. There we're good. So now, once we have the banner, that the cow say banner, the one that we actually want to use, we have to um, then look at what other commands that we can use. So unlike what I said in the last segment, to get to show the commands in, in MSF console, you can do a question mark, a lot like a Cisco router. So if you go up, you can see there's a ton of commands, um, but the one you're going to use the most is use. So use, and then you start using the things that you have. So we're going to type banner one, one more time. And you can see that there are exploits, auxiliary modules, post modules, payloads, encoders, and NOPs. So the cool thing about this is, 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 is based on a directory structure. So if you look at, we're going to be using the psexec module. So if you look in here, you have the MSF or Metasploit directory, then in modules, exploits, windows, SMB, and then there's the psexec that we're going to be using. So use windows or sorry exploits windows smb psexec and that's it now we're in the psexec module now i've gone ahead and set a few so show options to show what's already set and what options are available um, now i've set a few options here already like the ip address of my target the password the username that i'm going to psexec against and then the payload. Now I really don't like reverse TCP because it's a straight TCP connection and will rarely get out of most organizations. So we're going to actually change the payload to something else. We're going to say set or yeah, set payload. Now you can use these options as lowercase options, but I would recommend sticking with the uppercase option just simply because there are other things that inside of Metasploit can go wrong if you don't use all uppercases. So set payload, or use the, the case sensitive version of whatever options you're using. Payload to Windows, Interpreter, Reverse, HTTPS. So we're going to switch that. Now you can see that our options are similar, L host and L port. So we're just going to change the L port to 443. Then, so we've set uh, um, different things. Now what we need to do is exploit. Exploit has options. As I said, anything with dash, you can do dash H and you can find different things with it. So I'm going to exploit dash J. Now what that does is sets it as a job and we'll see what a job means in a second. So while it's going, I can actually run other things while that's going. And hopefully in a second get a payload out of this. Yeah. Maybe not. Well. That didn't work, but, oh, there it is. Ha, just had to wait a second. So now that we have a session, we can do sessions and see our different sessions. So in auxiliary modules, what you want to do is use run. So you have exploit in exploit modules. and all of the auxiliary modules, you want to do run. And then in payload modules, you actually have another uh, command. You can say generate. So now let's take a look at another command. One of the things that you'll get intimately familiar with once you start, once we, once we start um, actually making my, uh, payloads, is IRB and edit. So IRB, if you've used Ruby before, is um, the interpreter for Ruby. And the great thing about IRB is inside of Metasploit is it's in the context of wherever you are. So if you're in a session, so we're going to do sessions dash I, and let's do a help real quick to show you what those are. If you do sessions that I, which says interact with it, and we say one, we want to interact with session one, which is right here. We can do IRB, 
And that puts us in the context of our interpreter session. So now we can basically run any Ruby code that we want, a loop, uh, an if statement, anything that we want straight in, in Ruby on the host it is. Now it's not executing the Ruby on the host, but it's executing in the context of interpreter. So if you want to upload a file or download a file or do a bunch of other things, and we'll be talking about that when we actually make modules, you can do that straight from here. Um, so let's do uh, a quick one, client dot, and that's specifying the client, dot railgun, and we'll be talking about what railgun is, dot user32, that's the DLL that we're going to be talking to. Um, I think it's lock workstation. If we were on that system, what we actually did right there is lock that workstation. So it went to its login screen. So that's cool, cool stuff that we can do with Railgun, and we'll talk about that later. Um, but what if we wanted to edit a file? So let's do an ls real quick. Oh, that's in system32, which is not a good idea. So let's go to c colon directory. See, there's dial.bat. Let's edit dial.bat. What that'll do is get us straight into a uh, into a um, editor of our choice. And as soon as we exit out of it, it will first download it so that we can edit it and then up, re-upload it, whatever options that we have. So cool way to edit a file directly on the on target host. If we go back, if we go back around into this, if we type edit here, we're actually editing the module inside of Metasploit. So if we make changes, it will automatically get reloaded. So if, say we wanted to change, just for instance, we wanted to say, this isn't Microsoft. Oops, I can't. How do you? <laughs> I, but yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. This is Bob. And then, stupid Vi. Right, quit. So now it's changed. So if we do info on it, I have to reload. So reload. And then info. If we scroll up, we now have Bob's Windows authenticated code execution. Cool stuff. So when we start making more modules and, and writing things, we'll, we'll be using this a lot so that we, can, we don't have to jump out of our stuff before. Another fun one is load. Now load actually loads um, plugins for Metasploit. And there's a bunch of different plugins. If you just tab complete it, you can see some of them. Um, if you're in the directory structure, you can do plugins and list them there. Uh, but these are, there's a lot of cool plugins. Um, one of our favorites, one of my favorites, is the sound plugin written by, oh, this guy named Digi Ninja. You might know him as Robin Wood. Let's see if he'll make a sound. Okay, so it's not making a sound for some reason. But if you had your VM directly connected to your, your output and it wasn't muted, it would actually make sounds. It actually makes sounds even every time you make um, a connection to a, a session. So next up, that's, so that's load. And in the context of Meterper, session is dash i, one, load, incognito, it actually loads um, extensions onto Meterper. So different contexts means different things. And it's kind of a little bit confusing, but there's only really two contexts, inside of a module or inside of a Meterper session. The next one that's fun is save. Now save, say I want to do a lot of demos and I want to make it so that I can get back into that demo really quickly. Well save saves your configuration, the, the current settings, your, your um, variables at a global scale, your variables at a module scale um, into a file, the slash config. Now real quick, let's look at what's in that file now. You'll see that the file change or the file things or the the uh, configuration of things that are in here are the module I was in, the different options that were set, and some of these you didn't see just because they're advanced options, and, and that's pretty much it. And it shows you what active module I am in. So if I exit out of this and say yes, I don't want to, um, I don't care that I had sessions, and I go back into MSF console what we should be is in that module with all of those settings. 
All right, so we're back in, show options, and for some reason, none of those settings are there. Awesome. That's weird. Oh, it didn't even save the SMB client. Okay, so that's a bug, and we'll submit that as a bug later. So what if that happens, though? What if there are things that don't, don't save correctly? So let's set SMB user, and this is the next command we're going to talk about. So let's save, or let's, let's show you a different thing. So let's set SMB user to administrator, set SMB pass to that, so options, show options, see if everything's set correctly. Exploit. Log on type not granted. Weird. Okay. Oh, but it created a session for some reason. Whatever. It worked. <laughs> All right. If we type save, it's going to do that same thing. If we look back into here. Oh, it did save the SMB user and pass this time. But it, let's say it didn't. We can do a make RC. And we'll be talking about resource files in another segment. But what this does is takes all of the commands that you've typed since you started every single step of the way using a bunch of different modules, a uh, bunch of different steps, and creates a resource script. And you can load these resource scripts in a, a bunch of cool ways. So we're going to say make RC um, exploit example dot RC. Added all of those uh, nine commands. We go into our Metasploit directory because that's where we are. Exploit example. And there it is. Those are all the commands that we typed from start to finish. And what we want to definitely do is remove make or, or save and, our, and make RC. All right. So those are some of the commands. And, we, and we've exploited our first box. We've created sessions. How about searching for other modules? Now, what we could do is simply go in the modules directory and find, or grep, or anything else we wanted to do. It's quick, easy, command line. Anyone who knows Unix can do that kind of stuff. But there is also a search inside of Metasploit that you can search for things. So if we wanted to search psexec and find it all of the psexec modules, now we can see that there is a bunch of different modules that do psexec, and they're in different directories. So there's an auxiliary module that does psexec, an exploit module, the local exploit that does psexec. So that might help us find things a little easier than what we might have done with, um, with the modules directory. So sessions, we've already kind of gone over, but there's a bunch of things you can do with sessions, including terminating sessions, um, detaching interactive sessions, listening sessions, quiet mode, all of these other cool, fun things. And then finally, jobs. Now, there aren't any jobs right now because we haven't um, set up anything to run in the background. Um, we did with our PS exec real quick a second ago so that we could show it. But let's say, as, a, as an attacker, what I don't like doing is, is setting up a handler every single time I do an exploit. What I want to have is a handler just listening and taking in all of those exploits, all of those um, connections back by themselves. So what I will do is use exploit multi handler so this multi handler will will take all of those payload connections in we set our payload in here windows interpreter re reverse t https it's going to take a second to load it set our options so l host so uh, what is my ip address i keep thinking if so 128 SIM2, 168, 16.102.128. Set L port to 443. Set exit on session. So this is the important part. Set exit on session to false. That way we're actually not um, going to close the handler after it's done. And then exploit dash J makes it a job. Now anytime we get a session in, it's going to go to this handler. That way we can get a ton of sessions in really quickly and never have to deal with it. So um, jobs dash V, and there it is. And we'll be going into a lot more of each one of these commands, and I want you to just have something to play with initially. So let me know what you think. Hit me up at msf at hack5.org. Stay tuned to metasploitminute.com for more shows like these. And thank you again for supporting the show. 
If you, have, if you want to support us even more, you can go to hackshop.com, H-A-K-shop.com, and enter the code MOVIX to get some free Metasploit Minute stickers. Until next time, I'm MOVIX, and I'll be hacking till the cows come home.